if you insist. Yeah. <laughs> um, as they've already said, my name's Colin. Hi. Um, I'm 20 years old. I'm from Cleveland, Tennessee. So if you, Church of God headquarters is in my hometown. So this is home for me. I grew up in a pastor's home. What that meant was that I've known God since before I was born. Uh, I was literally born into the church, dedicated at a very young age. But what that also meant was that my parents and my father, who was a youth minister, had very high standards. Standards I call perfect standards, something I felt I could never live up to. Because of that, it was hard for me to feel love in my home. So I felt very unloved. I began to look to the world for things that would love me. I began to look into, you know, girls or drugs, alcohol. Very dark days. I became very almost depressed because nothing filled that hole in my heart. Nothing fulfilled me. Life became a blur. When I was 17 years old, I was driving home from school, and I, I went to school about 45 minutes away from my hometown. On my way home, I was getting off the interstate exit. I wasn't in my right mind. I'd, I had been at school, and I'd been, I'd been doing things I probably shouldn't have been doing. And I hydroplaned, meaning I car got out of control, and I went through the grass. I took out an interstate sign, and I ended up on the opposite on-ramp, oncoming traffic. Now, luckily, by God's grace, it took five minutes before anyone came up the ramp. By that time, I've now called 911, called my mother, who was freaking out, and uh, gotten out of the car dazed. I had bumps and bruises, scratches. That's it. It's minor concussion, maybe. So, like any kid who was living wrong, I was like, awesome, I lived. I don't have to worry. So I kept going. I didn't think about the consequences. And so God decided, he, you know, God just, I needed another wake-up call. It's the way God felt. So when I was 18, I was going, going on 19, I was driving my granddad's truck, not my car. Granddad's brand new truck that he bought for retirement. I'm coming home from a party. I'm not thinking straight. I want to show off in this brand new truck for my friends. So I whipped it around a curve. I hit a tree, and I put the truck in a creek. Now understand that means this window broke. It means the door came in. It means my mirror came in. This entire side of the truck was tore up. Where was I? I was outside the truck with a bump and a bruise and a scratch or two. God decided that day that two near-death experiences would maybe finally make me decide to get my life together. And it did. So I decided that, like Peter, I should probably begin to start following Jesus. I've been compared to Peter my whole life. I was very impulsive, uh, very quick to anger. I acted before I spoke. I began to go on every youth event I could, every retreat, every missions trip. Anywhere people like this were gathered, I wanted to be there. Because it was the only place where I felt like I didn't need drugs, sex, alcohol to get to fill the void inside of me. When I was 19 years old, it was probably two, three months before Abante actually, we went to New York, my whole youth group. The night before we left, this is the night before we're leaving, because I just went thinking, oh, I get to see New York City. I didn't go thinking God was going to do anything in my life, because we were going to bless other people. It wasn't about me, it was about them, but God had other ideas. So we were sitting in the lobby the night before we leave, and like most guys do, we were sitting around drinking a Coke, talking about sports and girls. No big deal. Until God decided to touch one person's life, say, hey, play some worship music. So they did. They began to walk around the lobby praying and interceding for each other. I just sat on the couch. Until one of my friends, who to this day now will be... He is my best friend, and I will love him forever. Because I'll never forget that God touched him to touch me. He walked over to me on the couch, and he got down, because I was sitting down. He, got, he bent down, and he looked at me, and he said, Colin, what's, why aren't you up worshiping? 
you know, because I grew up in the church. I was good at that whole, you know, put on the act, raise your hands, hallelujah. No one ever really know, knew that I was struggling. So he was like, why aren't you, why aren't you up? Why aren't you worshiping? Because that's what they were used to seeing me do. And I looked at him and I said, honestly, man, I feel dead inside. I, you know about all this. You know what I've done in my life. I don't feel God anymore, and I'm fairly certain that God doesn't want to feel me. And then he said words that I'll never forget. He quoted two things at me. He said, one, I will love you no matter how much you drink, no matter how much you smoke, no matter how much sex you have, no matter how depressed you are. He went through all these things. He said, I'll never not love you. You will always be my brother. And that alone was enough for me because love was all I wanted. But then he said something that to this day, Brian always loves it when I say this because it's, it's like my phrase. It's my, my thing. There's a verse in Romans 8. And everyone always loves to talk about, you know, the beginning where it's, there's therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And that's all well and good. But I love, I believe it's 32 or 33, where it says we are now more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Because see, he quoted that at me and I said, okay, yeah, that's, that's great. Well, who? Jesus saved my life. He went, no. See, you're living to survive. He said, you go daily living to survive. Okay, today I didn't drink. Today I didn't smoke. He said, no, it says more than a conqueror. You, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and a co-heir with Jesus your Lord. And so that, that was always something for me. So I say all of this to say simply, if you don't think God loves you, Trust me, he does. And he's put all these people in here to tell you how much he loves you. And he's put each of us in a place where we can love people. And remember that you are more than a conqueror. You weren't just born to survive. You were born to do more than conquer. Because at the end of the day, the enemy is the enemy's already where he belongs. Over. Done. He's there. Now it's your job to step up and be more than a conqueror and bring people to God.